every kid that I talk to wants to play at the Division I level. But a lot of you kids don't know how to get there. Your family doesn't know what steps you need to take. Well, I have the perfect guide for you. Tune in. But understand, the road to being a Division I player is tougher than ever before when trying to go against transfers and a lot of older guys. But I'll give you an example of a guy who didn't make excuses. Darnell Rogers is a 5-2 player who played Division I basketball and actually was a pretty good score playing at a pretty decent level at 5-2. Height is not an excuse. You can still do it. Joe Garrard was a player who's playing at Clemson, and I'm pretty sure he's graduated already, but he has hardly any athleticism. He hasn't ducked in the game before. He's not the fastest or the quickest, but he found a way to play Division I basketball. Athleticism is not an excuse. You just have to have the right strategy. And last but not least, you have a guy by, that goes by the name of Emmanuel who is playing at a Division I level right now on scholarship. He averaged 27 points per game playing a national schedule. So it's not that he's there just for you know his popularity or anything like that. He has one arm and he absolutely demolishes opponents. But in this video, we're going to get in the depth about how you can go ahead and get to the highest levels of basketball and hopefully earn your way to a scholarship. First thing you have to do to be able to earn a Division I scholarship is have something that you're good at, okay? You have to put the work in and it has to show. The smaller you are, the higher level you wanna play at, you have to produce stats, especially if you're not going to a Mount Verde or a high level prep school. Joe Garrard is a perfect example of that. He's only 6'1", 6'2", so he has to be a guy who's delivering. He can't be a guy based on potential. And because he's not very athletic, he has to be dependent on his skill, his craft, and his shooting. And that's something he showed on his way to high school and college. As a freshman in high school, he averaged 33 points. By his junior year, he was averaging 50 points. Now, I'm not saying that you always have to average this many points, but I'm telling you right now, if you do not fill in all the checks and balances that you need to play at that level, you need to come through with stats, especially if you're not a big player, especially if you are not the prototypical point guard when it comes to athleticism. And when it comes to his game, he's extremely smart. He has a high IQ. A lot of his skills translated over to college. And for a lot of you guys who think that, oh, I can't dunk, so it means I can't play. No, it just means that you have to build a game that allows you to play at an elite level. And he's an elite shooter. He's skilled. He's confident. And he has a high IQ, which allowed him to commit to a school like Syracuse. And if I'm not mistaken, he was a four-star recruit. At the college level, that shooting kept displaying itself. He shot the ball at 40% from three over his career. And this translated nicely to whatever college team he was on. He always helped them win. And he always was a valuable piece. He averaged 15 points per game, I believe as a high school senior, and this Clemson team was really, really good. As a D1 high major player, I should be able to look at any one of your games and instantly tell what you're good at. If you're missing shots, that's okay. You should still be shooting those shots. A guy who's a scout who's gonna be able to tell, most likely, if you're gonna be able to knock down shots on a consistent basis, whether you're missing shots that game or not. Garrard is an excellent example of building a game that fits you. Sometimes you could have all the talent in the world, but if you don't know how to make it work and have it fit into a structure, then it will not translate. Guys, if you're smaller, stats matter, especially if you're not playing at a big time program. Darnell Rogers is another example of a small guy who was highly productive in high school. He averaged 28, seven and five. He showed that he could play both ways and he performed at a high level. That's what you guys have to understand. Stats matter if you're small. Translatability matters if you're small. AUT matters if you're small. And that's something he was able to prove throughout his entire high school career is that he wouldn't be a defensive liability. He was a super athlete. Even though he was small, he net hardly ever got bullied. He could shoot the ball and he was almost unstoppable going to the basket. 
These are things you're going to have to go against if you're smaller. You don't just get to be good at one thing. Your whole game has to be absolutely special. And I believe if he was about six foot, you might be seeing him playing in the NBA. So that comes back to the point of any player can make it if you have the right strategy. Like I said, a guy who's 5'2 was helping UMBC in their conference, leading them in scoring for a lot of it. He averaged 15 points a game because his ability to shoot, score, get to the basket, he had no holes in his game. And that's something that is the unfortunate truth about being a smaller player. You cannot have weaknesses. You have to be fantastic. You have to be productive, and you have to also have intangibles. If you know Darnell Rodgers, you know he's a warrior. He's a dog. He's going to play hard. He's going to impact the game almost at all times, and those are things you're going to have to have. And they, they really translated at a high level when you see them in college. He was an elite scorer, elite athlete, he playmate, and he defended at an extremely high level. Everyone has the opportunity if you know the right strategy. Once again, another guy who's able to prove that no matter the circumstances, you could play D1. Hansel averaged 26, 11, and 7 on a national schedule, which is super impressive. The guy was athletic. He could play make with the best of them. And he impacted the game just like any other D1 mid-major player, low-major player would. And that's what you guys have to understand. If you want to get all the offers, you have to dominate your competition. And that carried over in college. He hasn't been able to play very much. I think his one arm has a lot to do with it, but he still impacts the game. He's athletic. He plays hard. He's an energy guy. His skill set is obvious. And that's what I want you guys to do. If you are back home, ask your friends, what are you actually great at? What a part of your game actually stands out i want you to look back at your stats look at how much you're producing whether it's in high school ball or aau like i said the things that makes him translatable in a division one player is this elite athlete he's an elite athlete energy guy he was a very good playmaker in high school and you see some of that stuff when you watch him even in college in limited minutes now what is the blueprint for you to be playing at a division one school for free well, it's a little bit more nuanced than what one may think. Let's start off with the obvious. You have to put in the work. Now, you can see Jared McCade here. He's putting in his work with movement. You should be working in the weight room. All this stuff is super important. For a lot of guys, you're going to have to defend a position and look like you're athletic enough to be out there, especially if you don't have a special skill set. It's like shooting or, you know, having the ability to have a high IQ. Most of you guys are going to have to have a certain amount of athleticism. You also have to be putting in your work with constant reps, understanding how your game works, and then making a plan that shows your strengths and allows you to play at a level that you feel comfortable at most days you should be having some type of movement or uh lifting routine and then you should be going to your routine as far as mastering certain skills that fit your game and that's what you see from jared mccain here then you want to get in sometimes your live reps your live opportunities whether that's playing as much pickup ball as you can or having a trainer hit you with a big stick so you could actually work on your reactions what you have, guys have to understand is a lot of these guys playing at the high major level are able to make reads that the normal kids just cannot. They have a lot of confidence, and a lot of that comes from getting in as much live reps as possible. It enhances your feel and your confidence. Now, if you want to play at that high level, it also takes contacts and playing at a high level and exposing yourself. I like doing the whole AU brand name thing because... People need to be able to see your game, especially if you're playing at a regular high school. You can use high school to develop your skill set, especially if you're not playing in a great program or prep school. Use high school to get in as many reps as you can, be as aggressive as possible, work hard. And then when it comes to AAU, you could be playing with a team anywhere and still be seen. 
I have the rankings of the top circuits that I think are the best right now, but it really doesn't matter where you play, EYBL or New Balance. If you're good enough, you're going to be seen. Focus on your development first, and when you're able to play the role that you really want to, go up in levels. But make sure you're getting playing time, make sure you're recording all your games and putting together a tape so that you can send out to different schools. Thanks for watching our video today and if you're needing any assistance, make sure that you go to our website, you get evaluated or you get any type of help that you need. We are always looking to help. Thanks for watching.